Hi, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am Nikmanya Oswald. Please don't forget to subscribe, comment in case of any queries. Put them in the comment section. I'll be glad to answer them. Now, today I'm going to start a new topic, chapter 6 from the IGCSE ICT curriculum, ICT applications. Now, when we talk about ICT applications, we're basically looking at uh, we're basically looking at applications or how we use ICT in our day-to-day -day lives. Now, I will try to explain as much as I can. And as you can see, we're supposed to look at all these without any... Uh, we're supposed to look at this and understand how they operate and how they help us to use our lives. So for today, for today's video, I'll just communicate. I'll talk about communication applications and... Uh, I'll also talk about the downloading applications. Now, when we talk about communication applications, we are looking at how we use our ICT systems to help and uh, to help us and understand, to help us and communicate, to help us and talk to our friends. We share ideas. Now, when we are using communication applications, we are basically we basically have two types of communication applications. We have paper-based communication and digital communication. Yeah, paper-based is where we have to print out the media and have it in physical paper. Whereas digital communication is where it is almost online. Now, once you're communicating, we can either communicate because we want we have personal reasons for communicating, or we can communicate for business purposes. Some examples of paper-based communication, like I said, it is where we have hard copies of printouts that we are supposed to use for our communication purposes. Some examples of, uh, of paper-based communication, we have newsletters, posters, flyers, newspapers, and magazines, and brochures. Now, what are all these things that we are talking about? What is a newsletter? A newsletter is something that is released regularly, maybe once a month, maybe yearly, maybe weekly, maybe daily, to inform people about their interests or what they're supposed to know. Uh, for example, if you're in school, uh, at the end of each term, you're given a newsletter to take back home, you are informed about what is going to transpire next term, what has transpired this term, and what main events are to happen in the near future. So basically newsletters are there to show us, to inform people about their areas of interest. Now, how do you create newsletters? Mostly, when you're creating paper-based communication softwares or paper-based communication applications, we use the most uh, common softwares used are word processing and desktop. Uh, publishing later on we're going to see how they oper how they operate uh, to just to give you a highlight of how uh, a word processor or DTP or presentation software works one you open the application or the software you would like to use then you create boxes or text boxes or the text then you can attach photos you can upload images from the camera then you when you all uh, when you're done putting all that in uh, in the software, in the document you try to create, in the uh, presentation you try to create, you can print out to get your flyers, your magazines, and the rest. Then we also have past posters. Posters are a simple way, but very effective way of uh, of, of communicating with people. I know you've seen these posters on the roadsides, uh, on big organizations. As you can see, mine is a Coca-Cola poster. It's advertising for Coca-Cola. It's a big poster. We say the first thing, it promotes an event. It promotes good causes. It advertises, uh, advertises business promotions or sales. And it's also used for decoration, which show people your interest. For example, people have posters of your favorite stars in your bedrooms or at home. You're supposed to put a poster of someone there. Now, posters are a combination of both text images, colors, and uh, they come almost in all sizes. Then the other, we have a flyer. A flyer is almost like a, uh, 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 it's like a poster. It's a smaller size, a uh, smaller version of a poster. 
and uh, they are normally printed in single sheets of paper, eight and a half inches by eleven inches in size. And uh, we, can, we can see flyers are usually handed out to people instead of being attached to a wall. Then some examples of digital communication we have websites, smart media presentations, music scores, and cartoons. What are websites? Websites are basically a collection of web pages and contain a variety of, uh, of content. Now, you, whatever you can put on a flyer or a poster, you can put on a website. Uh, once you choose a website, you can either develop your own website or you can pay another company to advertise on their website. That means if you use your first option, if you create your own website, you will have to employ someone who can who has the knowledge of creating a simple website. Many companies choose to advertise their products on websites rather than pay best solutions because websites are, are attract many people. You don't have to be in a place to access a website. I can be very far from a given a given uh, for example where I am, I can access a website from any other country, from any other continent. I don't have to be in a physical place to access the, the poster or the flyer. That's why most companies have decided to use the websites because they can reach millions and millions of people even though they're in different places. Like I'm, like it's uh, showing on the screen, uh, most modern websites include lots of multimedia content like streaming video, sound and animation, which makes communication, communicating information over the website a much more interesting experience. Here are some of the examples of some of the advantages and disadvantages of using websites. Might be the content can be added, web pages can be created or updated. The content is accessible to literally millions of people at any time and at the same time. Then disadvantages, you need a computer or portable device, of course, which is a bit expensive. You need an internet connection and as many, many more. Then we have multimedia presentations. Multimedia presentations are basically they use animation, video, and sound or music to make a presenting a presentation more interesting. And usually we use a multimedia projector to present the multimedia pro uh, projections. Some of the advantages we can have while we use multimedia projections are. Uh, sound and mission the video can be used, make topics more interesting and helps hold the user presentation. You need a computer to view the presentation, which is a bit expensive. Software uh, to create the presentation can be a little bit expensive. Equipment failure can be a disaster when giving multimedia presentations. And so many and so many others. Now, we also have music scores. Music scores are basically used uh, to preja uh, to generate and produce music. What is a music score? A music score a music score looks like this. It's music that is written on paper. As you can see this is a simple music score that uh, that plays uh, uh, Alan Walker's song or sample and see how it works. That's a music score. Basically, it helps us to generate music and product and produce music scores. Uh, I don't have to write on paper like it used to be done in those days. I just have to use some simple software and I can generate a music score. Now, some ways of using music scores we have methods we can use include we can use sequencers that we use to create musical sounds like drum beats we can use some wave editors that allow music and sound to be edited and modified you change the pitch you change the volume we can uh, use uh, an midi musical instrument digital interface that allows musical instruments to be plugged into a computer nowadays you see people plugging their plugging their pianos their keyboards their guitars their drums into the computer and then they play and then it automatically brings it out the sound and then they can create music uh, digitally. 
those have digital music notators. This software basically allows us to compose music on a computer than writing music by hand. Like I showed you a simple sample from musicode.com, a sample of a simple song and it was created digitally. We didn't have to write it out uh, on a piece of paper. Next, we look at what we call cartoon animations or what we call cartoons in simple, simple terms. Uh, basically, cartoons or animations can be produced using computer hardware and software. With the introduction of ICT, cartoons uh, have changed a lot. Uh, basically, now we have 3D animation whereby we can design a simple computer and a 3D skeleton from or what we call a framework or basic structure. Uh, then uh, we do a lot of twinning and morphing uh, to, and rendering to have a final uh, animation produced. Now, uh, when we are designing all these, when we are putting all this together, we, do, we go through the process of twinning or morphing, and then the final process of having everything final is what we call rendering. As you can see, this is a simple cartoon frame that was drawn by from by Disney in Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. As you can see, we can use uh, a so special software to create, to add the following to a 3D model, to create textures, to create poses, to create effects, to create animation. Then the other mode of communication we have are smartphones, or what we call mobile phones. Now, the smartphone is a smaller version of a tablet PC combined with the added functionality of a mobile phone. Uh, mobile phones basically communicate by using towers inside many cells and work together to cover large areas. These towers are the ones that allow the transmission of data throughout the mobile phone network. Uh, to use a mobile phone, uh, you need a plug-in device that uses uh, a available USB ports or a subscriber identity module or to call a SIM card that allows a computer to connect to the mobile phone network. Then this allows uh, access to internet. The difference between a normal phone and a smartphone is that a smartphone allows access to the internet so any phone that accesses internet is called a smartphone and any phone that doesn't access internet is what we call a mobile phone we basically use smartphones for the following we use them for calling or messaging we use them for mobile internet uh, browsing we use them for camera or video uh, or video video functionality and also we use them for gps navigation services now what is gps navigation of course gps we have all used google maps at some point in time uh what most modern uh, smartphones can be used is, uh, to navigate you can use them to navigate satellite systems you're using your car you're driving a smartphone can help you to navigate as a, a given area the most common ways of using GPS navigation is in customer systems, giving the user directions on driving, directions and time to destination, then live traffic information and suggestions. As you can see, the GPS functionality helps us to access all the services. I can find the fastest route. It can tell me uh, the different options I can use to get to the place I want to get to. I can have a satellite view to see where exactly I am and how best I can I can uh, access a place. I can basically see that it basically GPS helps me to navigate faster. In case of driving, to tell me there's traffic here, there's traffic here. If you do this, you will find traffic. So basically, that's all it does. GPS helps us to navigate faster, navigate better by providing us information regarding traffic and and location. What are some of the advantages and disadvantages of using GPS? As you can see, the advantages are you don't need to buy a separate NetSat navigation system. You always have your phone with you. It is less likely to forget it and remembering a separate system. So these are all ex explained here. It agreed with other services such as Google Maps and then sometimes not as accurate as other systems. Of course, if you ever use Google Maps, you realize that it takes somewhere and then you reach there and you find there is a hole, there is a block and you can't pass through that road. You usually rely on a working internet connection for the duration of the journey. That means if you don't have an internet connection, you are not are able to access the GPS connectivity. Then we have the voice over internet protocol, what we call internet telephony. 
it is uh, telephone communication via the internet where we make calls make and receive telephone calls via the computer and the data is transmitted over the internet rather than directly uh, directly through a telephone line now most companies most organization you find that they have desktop this desk phones and they're connected over a cable they are connected over the internet they call from one office to another through those phones that's what we mean by the internet telephony of late there are other applications that are being that can offer these services uh, some of the advantages and disadvantages of internet telephony we have usually free international internet to internet calls um, we have highly discounted internet and internet national calls we have you can still make calls once you lose your phone then the disadvantages the call quality depends on the speed of the internet connection international calls can be quite laggy and poor quality what do you mean by laggy a bit slow and you lose connectivity all the time then requires a computer and broadband internet connection and of course it's less portable than a mobile phone other services that can be gotten from our smartphones we have it can be used to control a number of different devices in a smart home if i have a smart home it means i can connect it to my smartphone and i can be able to see to switch on the camera switch on the lights switch on the security lights switch on the, 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 the open the gate open the doors because i have connected them together then two many modern smartphones can be used for video calling of course skype uh, we have Skype, we have Zoom, we have Google Meet. All these services can be accessed using a modern smartphone. Modern mobile phones or smartphones can be sent standard text messages and more messages that you send on the phone. Then a variety of insert messaging services have been set up. These services often combine text messages and video messages, for example, WhatsApp. Then Advantages and disadvantages of using smartphones. Uh, smartphones are very portable. They have a good battery life. They are very convenient. Disadvantages: they are more expensive than a tablet PC for the same price. For example, you can buy a smartphone, a good smartphone at one thousand dollars, whereas you can get a good tablet at that price. So they become more expensive. They have a small screen size and no keyboard, which makes them of limited use for office or multimedia work. They are almost impossible to upgrade. They are prone to damage, and lower and G, uh, lower CPU and GPU speeds compared to other computer types. Now, this basically communication applications in a nutshell. Now, I will share data handling applications. Data handling applications are basically concerned with how data is input, stored, and output in a computer system. Uh, a number of applications make use of simple data handling techniques. We have surveys, we have address lists, we have clubs and society records, we have school reports and school libraries. I'll start with the survey. What is a survey? A survey basically is a, 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 is used to gather information about a particular topic or a particular item. So we use a survey and questionnaire. We give it to people and they give you information about that, that particular item. Whereas surveys are very useful, they can also be massful, massively time-consuming in all stages of a process due to the volume of the data that needs to be processed. That's why with our ICT applications, we tend to use online questionnaires, for example, using Google Forms. We can use surveys, a uh, market survey, a website called market survey that can help you with our uh, online surveys. So it has helped us to minimize the time that we could spend on doing a manual survey. Uh, some of the improvements that have been made to the surveys because of the ICT applications, we have the ability to design surveys using computer word processing, the ability to conduct surveys over the internet, and the ability to produce statistical analysis automatically. Then we have a mailing list. A mailing list is basically a list that, an address list. Yeah, 
all the information of contacts your their home ad their phone numbers their email addresses their uh, home addresses their personal data their data of birth is all attached to a mailing list so that in case you need to send out various mails at the same time you don't have to type in the email but rather you just use the mailing list then we have society records societies and clubs uh, often keep records of their membership which would typically include membership number the name payment details personal details interests uh, very many many aspects the telephone number the date joined the membership status and usually we store such data in a simple database a simple database that could hold all the information making it necessary and necessary to keep paper records those days if you are part of a society club maybe part of a gym they'll just record your name on a piece of paper which will become hectic and and disturbing but of recent because of database and IC applications everything becomes uh, simple and uh, easy to use with the use of uh, ICT applications then uh, other data applications can include school reports attendance reports library reports and very, very many other aspects of uh, of of data applications and data handling applications so that's the end of today's video that I would like to share with you. Please don't forget to subscribe, watch the video, invite your friends to subscribe. If you have any queries, any questions, feel free to contact me through my email. Uh, my email, you can contact me through my email, which is... Uh, let me see at gmail.com I'll be glad to hear from you and I'll also share with you what I also know. Welcome. Please enjoy. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Till next time.